Very much, guys. A very interesting game to dissect. I want to start with picks and bans. Uh, there's a couple of questions I want to highlight. First of all, the dual lane was going to be a focus. We've seen Uzi as well as Zero going for that vein Janna lane. On the other yep. side of the coin, we've seen a Kale support. Crepo, we've talked about it at the desk. In Rated's champion pool is interesting. Sona didn't work out. Kale, definitely not. And the playstyle. What's your take? Uh, Kayla's probably one of the sports I'm, I'm least versed in as is how she works, but like just looking objectively at the matchup, Kayla and Kog'Maw are going to look for more trades, longer trades, Janna Vayne is going to look for very short and, and just punchy trades, and they were allowed to do so in the start of the lane, especially looking at level 1, the, the, the Vayne just got a couple all attacks for free and backed out, then a new shield came in, a couple all attacks for free backed out, I felt in case you'd notice this, just try and back out and go for these long trades, but then again Roll Cup wasn't really allowing that, I'm actually not the biggest fan of the vein pick. I think Uzi was just flexing right here because yeah. you should get outranged and you should get outplayed on this lane. But yeah, he just he just spaced it so well and he made it work. I completely agree. I think Uzi really was just flexing. That was really an overconfident pick. It was really optimistic to think that he could survive laning phase, which to me, he really didn't. I mean, he got TP pressure from Cola because Cola was winning top lane eventually. But uh 2v2 straight up, you saw there was a time when actually Candy Panda could have killed him if he had just flashed for it. So to me, Uzi and Zero actually lost 2v2 for the first time, and it was against SK's bottom lane, which is not what I would expect. So I think when he hovered over Caitlyn and Trisana, those were the right picks, but then he was like, I'm just going to style. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. pick Vayne. It ended up working in his favor. I do want to highlight Zero before we move on to the rest of the game. Uh, Zero on Janna, again, mind-boggling. Interestingly, Janna is 7-1 and one in the World Championships mm -hmm. thus far. Uh, Zero's picked up three wins on that champion. As the game progressed, it worked out incredibly well. The lane, despite you saying they lost the 2v2, Insect came in. He was very aggressive. Let's talk a little bit more about what Starhorn Royal Club did around the map because they seem to just strangle SK out. I just want to point out a small thing about that, Jenna, is he actually rushes Captain Boots relatively early just so he can make his team even quicker. And that allows them just to... These these quick team fight skirmishes where, where Royal Club is just moving quicker than the enemy, both Janna and those Captain Boots allow that to happen. And yeah, you saw that they just outposition them. Zero will either flash in and use Monsoon or just use Monsoon to cancel. And Royal Club plays around that beautifully. Well, yeah, it's just about that speed, too. The Janna passive, you have uh, the Orianna as well to get people up, so they can engage team fights extraordinarily quickly, especially with that Rengar. And I have to question people's ability to just kind of read Royal Club's picks. How many times is Insect going to get Rengar? How many yeah. times is Cola going to get Aurelia? And how many times is Zero going to get Janna? Because it's really obvious what these guys are going to play every time, but it just feels like they, the teams don't respect it or really understand how powerful Royal Club is on these champs. Freak. Yeah, and as well, it's it thing is when you pick a champion like Janna, this is a very team fight focused team as well. Yes, you do have people like uh, Cola and Uzi who can split push, but like they're still trying to five and five. It's what Janna wants to do. It's what the Oriana wants to do, and they're set up for this. And the teams aren't really strategically outplaying this, right? When you can start reading in your opponent's picks, you know what kind of champions are coming. You can develop a counter strategy and say, well, you're going to be bad at X because we can predict all your picks, and no one's doing that yet. Well, you mentioned the team fights. Uh, this particular team did manage to get a few big fights in their favor. Let's pull up the first replay mm -hmm. where a couple of teleports from both Cola and Freddy come into play. Freak, talk us through what Starhorn Royal Club did right and how they sort of punished SK. So Starhorn Royal Club, first of all, are positioned incredibly well and they don't get themselves in a really bad spot. What SK does poorly, though, is one... Uh, this is this is one of the, the Jana kick versus the earlier one. Uh, two teleports properly. down to the bottom, 20 minutes, Janna ends the fight as SK over aggress. Okay, yeah, so let's roll a clip out and we're going to see how everyone comes into this one. Uh, yeah, so the teleport's way over committed and this actually kick by Sunscreen is really poor. He actually ward hops too far away, giving room for Janna to flash in. So Freddy's isolated, it wastes the KL ulti blocking basically no damage, and then the great disengage means that now SK's over chasing, their tank is already gone, Svenskeren's so squishy at this point, he's like in the back lines at this point. Whereas for SHRC, they properly positioned. Oriana comes down properly from the flank, right? And it's it's just this really poorly coordinated, overstretched fight from SK. Yeah, and at a certain point, if you're going to commit to that fight, you either you or disengage either way. You either go ahead and you use that Kale ult onto the Maokai and then get out of dodge immediately. Or you let the Maokai continue to go in, and if Ari's going to dash forward like that, you have to just commit to that fight entirely because they lost, um, you know, they lost the Kale ult, they lost the Maokai ult damage, and yeah, you need to decide in advance how that Kale ult's going to be used. 
And I just, I don't understand why people always want to team fight Royal Club. It's just so mind blowing <laughs> because it's what they're known to do. Like to watch Royal Club team fight, it's like watching a, a beautiful dance or something. You know, it's just like, whoa, it's like so mesmerizing and beautiful. But just like stop doing it. Just go siege, <laughs> go split push, look for picks, stop fighting them five on five because that's how people lose. So Starhorn Royal Club all but punched their ticket to the quarterfinals. They're four and zero at the moment, mm -hmm. barring a monumental misplays in their last two games and some help from the other side. They're there. Right. TSM also have the possibility of being in a tiebreak scenario if they lose their next few games and if SK win there. So SK are not entirely out, but even with Sven Skeren back at the helm. They seem to be even more lost against the Honor Club than they did yesterday. Uh, would you say that's fair, or am I being too overly critical here? Crepo, you, you want to chime in there? Well, I think when TSM will face against uh, SK, they will just ban the kill again like they did before, and then I feel they'll just put N-Rated back on, on uncomfortable champions. And because he held his own, I think Kale is actually one of Enrated's strongest champions. Yep. Let's tie that in with the fact that nobody's used to playing against Kale support. Mm -hmm. That makes it a strong pick. I think TSM banned it last time. I'm not entirely sure, but I think they did. And that will just put him on uncomfortable champions again, and that will throw the matchup in TSM. Let's get a closing thought from my Monty. Yeah, SK moving forward too. You know, when we've seen them in the EU LCS, they have been very dependent on the Nidalee and the Aatrox and those split pushers. And SK's challenge coming into this tournament, you you know, they're go those champions are going to be banned against you because they're the obvious kind of oddball champions. They play to SK's strengths. So it's up to SK to come out with enough stuff that they can open up those champions again. But so far, they haven't shown anything else that's been ban-worthy. And so kind of their most powerful picks remain unusable. Yeah, well, interesting notes. I just heard from production while we were chatting that after that game, Imp walked up to Uzi as they were departing the stage and said to him in English... You are the best AD carry in the world. Uh, wow. A lot of respect and a lot of props being paid to Uzi Imp, obviously watching that game very closely. Uh, guys, we're going to take a quick break and leave you with that thought. Meet us here in three and a half minutes when AHQ Esports Club takes on Samsung White. We'll be right back. Jazz is trying to do damage up to the side. I think Cole is done for you. Freddy may also fall. There's the shockwave. Comes up, full down. And Jazz is flying. Oh, one more auto attack. Coming in from the back horns at less than half HP. Svenskun's going to land the Q. Follows through. There's oh, the ultimate coming too. out. Zero going to knock them straight back out. They're all very low here at Royal Club. But they're going to try and turn it around. And Ray will be the first one. Shockwave comes down. Svenskun will fall from this one. His insect now joins as well. Actually, Svenskun's on the Intervention, Jezus jumps on, Insect trying to beat them up with the back, the rest of the team comes through. 